Make this new school year an opportunity for your kids to learn important life skills with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely while parents keep an eye on kids' money habits. Greenlight also helps families get into their fall routine with a chores feature that lets parents assign chores and pay kids allowance when they check them off. Get your first month free at greenlight.com slash Spotify. Greenlight.com slash Spotify. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. This is Optimal Work Daily. Entrepreneurial Freedom and Responsibility by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. I worked as an employee only once in my life. In 1992, I had a part-time job at a small independent retail store, earning $6 an hour. It didn't take me long to realize that I didn't want to have another job, ever. It wasn't that it was a bad experience, per se. I just felt it would be better to be the boss instead of a minion. At the very least, the boss always gets more hit points. So at that point, I made the decision not to be an employee again. I was going to have to find another way to earn a living. Next, I tried working as an independent contractor doing game programming and eventually running my own game development business working on games contracted by larger publishers. I eventually realized that that wasn't for me either. I gained the freedom of setting my own hours, but my publisher clients became my de facto bosses. I often had to adapt to their frequently unwise decisions, and my financial future was tied closely to theirs. Next! I later changed business models and got into developing and selling shareware, which is really a direct sales business. After I built enough direct sales to achieve a stable income base, I also did some licensing to bring in extra royalty income. That I liked. I was making money even while I slept. I'm still making monthly income off games I created as far back as 10 years ago. They were designed for Windows 3.1 and have never been upgraded, not even for Windows 95 but new customers still buy them and the newer games every month. I know the entrepreneurial passive income route isn't for everyone, but the freedom aspect is really nice. You get to be in complete charge of your own time. You decide which projects to tackle. You can work whatever hours you want. You don't have to ask permission from anyone for any decisions you make or actions you take. There's just no substitute for holding the reins. Some people think all this freedom is the best part of being an entrepreneur but that freedom is a double-edged sword. If you abuse it, you get into trouble. Initially, you may enjoy the freedom of sleeping in late and taking two-hour lunches, but then you see that overusing that freedom will hurt your business. Your personal weaknesses turn into bottlenecks for your business. If you don't have much self-discipline, you learn to develop some. If you have a tendency to procrastinate, you learn to overcome it. So the extra freedom actually helps you sculpt your character. There are few jobs that do this character sculpting to the same degree because most jobs don't directly link your personal productivity to actual bottom line business results and pay you accordingly. A job can shield you from the full effects of both freedom and responsibility. If you slack off for a day, you still get the same paycheck. It takes time to learn to balance freedom with responsibility. Responsibility and self-discipline give you the freedom to be more spontaneous because you won't risk abusing your freedom. When I lived in LA, one morning while getting ready to go to work, I said to my wife, let's go to Vegas. She was surprised at first, but she was all for it. So we made a hotel reservation, packed a suitcase, and within less than an hour after getting the idea, we were on the road for the four-hour drive from LA for a spontaneous three-day Vegas trip, laughing much of the way there. Nothing was pre-planned, and we didn't even tell anyone until after we'd arrived at the hotel. We had a fantastic time. Sometimes it's really nice to take advantage of the freedom of not having a job. I don't know too many jobs that let you say to your boss a half hour before you're supposed to be at your desk, my wife and I decided to have some fun for the next few days. Not sure when I'll be back. See ya. But the key is to balance the enjoyment of such freedom with responsibility so you don't end up developing a nasty procrastination habit. Being very responsible and on top of all your projects is what grants the extra freedom to be spontaneous with no negative consequences. 
When you've got everything well organized, you're in a good position to know when you can be freely spontaneous versus when it would be irresponsible or reckless to do so. In the words of Brian Tracy, paraphrasing, disorganized people aren't spontaneous, they're just confused. I think it's interesting that there's a project in the works to attempt to build a statue of responsibility on the west coast of the USA to balance the Statue of Liberty on the east coast. I hope this project succeeds because we could all use a reminder that responsibility and freedom go hand in hand. You just listened to the post titled Entrepreneurial Freedom and Responsibility by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We all have non-negotiables. Maybe you never skip leg day or have to take your morning walks, but when your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. Therapy can help you reclaim control of your time and values. And make no mistake, therapy is for everyone. Whether or not you've been through significant trauma, therapy can be a great tool for setting boundaries, learning positive coping skills, and ultimately becoming the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash workdaily today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash workdaily. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree. Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash startup. So just go to indeed.com slash startup right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash startup. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And I want to give a big thank you to Steve for letting us read his content. Uh, He's a huge blogger in the personal development space, and Justin actually reads a lot of his content on the podcast Optimal Living Daily. And just a little more background information about him, Steve is widely recognized as one of the most successful personal development bloggers in the world, with his work attracting more than 100 million visits to stevepavlina.com. He has written more than 1,500 articles and recorded many audio programs on a broad range of self-help topics, including productivity, relationships, spirituality, and entrepreneurship. Conscious growth has been the central focus of his life. He studies what it means to grow and how we can deliberately invite, process, and integrate new growth experiences. Come by stevepavlina.com for a lot more great content, to learn a lot more about Steve and also to show your support would mean a lot to us as uh, he was one of the first authors we narrated back in 2015. All right, that's going to do it for today. Hope you are having a great one. And I'm going to be right back here reading to you tomorrow. So I'll see you there. That's where your optimal life awaits.